Okay, thank you very much, Bianca, for your kind introduction. Welcome uh, to my speech. I'm uh, honored to be the first speaker in this, uh, in this session and the first speaker of the academic track in this room. So I'm uh, really excited to present my work that is in collaboration with Vincenzo Di Pietra, is my colleague at Politecnico di Torino. He did uh, the most part of this work, so I really want to thank him for his precious uh, uh, work he did uh, in uh, during this project. Uh, what's the goal of this presentation is to show you how it's possible to exploit open source software to preserve bees uh, communities and to analyze uh, the uh, area where bees lives. So in this context, uh, uh, this is the outline of my presentation. First of all, I'll introduce the BEAMS project. You probably you don't know anything about this because it's quite a small project, but it's important that uh, I introduce this, then uh, I'll move uh, into the analysis of the data that we have considered. So I'll uh, give you an idea about the geometrics role. I'm a geometrics man because I'm working at the university and I'm a belong of the geometrics lab at Politecnico di Torino. Then uh, I'll show you the methodology that we have developed and used for reaching the goal. I'll describe the sites and the data acquisition, uh, the photogrammetric process, the uh, image analysis that we did uh, using open source software. I'll show you some results about classification and ground cover, and we'll did some conclusions and future steps. In this slide, you can see all guys which uh, have studied these, uh, um, this topic, both uh, we are, some of, uh, some of us are from uh, Politecnico di Torino, other ones are Israeli guys, because this project uh, that is called BEAMS is uh, a, a project founded in uh, 2019 and is a, a scientific and technological collaboration project between Italy and Israel. It was granted by the Italian Ministry and the Israel Ministry of Science and Technology okay, in the state of Israel. BIMS is the acronym mm -hmm. of uh, Monitoring Bee Diversity in Natural Systems. So the idea is uh, to develop uh, novel aerial and uh, classical ground methods to combine them in order to evaluate biotic and abiotic indicators. You know that bees are really, really important for us because uh, uh, without them it's not possible to survive for many years a year and it's also difficult to analyze them because they are quite small. The other problem is that uh, the typical or classical methods for analyze bees and uh, their spaces is time consuming, is so difficult because uh, we cannot track uh, each bee during its fly, so it's so difficult. And the idea is to identify, to try to develop uh, some techniques uh, useful to perform these uh, approaches in an automatic way. So the motivations, uh, the main motivation of these studies are uh, summarized in these slides. So the pollination play uh, a key role in maintaining global human food supply and uh, ecosystem integrity. And uh, it's important in this context to conserve and restore the bees communities and their spaces, the space where they live. So the idea is not only to study them, but also to identify the cost-effective uh, environmental indicators in order to be able to focus the attention not on the whole world of bees, but to sum up which are the most important parts. And for this reason, the research group is not only composed by geomatics guys, but will show you that is a mix between competencies, because the goal is, uh, first of all, to acquire these indicators, merging traditional techniques and these innovative ones in order to obtain some methodology that can be applied in a quasi-automatic way. Okay, So the idea is to process this data and uh, reply this study everywhere. As I said before, uh, I'm Paolo Dabove, I'm uh, one of the principal investigators of this project, but the most uh, important work was, the, uh, was done by Vincenzo Di Pietra. Uh, on the right side, there are the two main uh, professors uh, from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, the Faculty of Agriculture for the Environment, which worked on uh, two different aspects, uh, 
Professor Yal Michal, which is the head of the mm -hmm. uh, department of uh, chemistry at this university, worked on uh, the soil analysis in order to identify, to characterize the soil moisture, soil, soil parameters. And uh, Professor Yael Mandelik, which, is, uh, uh, be which belongs to the Department of Entomology, studied the conservation, the biodiversity, the ecosystems where bees live, uh, and uh, which uh, helped us in order to identify and to collect the data, the on-field data, in order to be able to perform comparisons in this context. Of course, uh, the time is not so long, so I, can I cannot uh, uh, also show you the comparison results, uh, but uh, I'll focus the attention on the procedure and the methodology that we did. So probably you are familiar with the geomatics terms. What we did was to follow the whole procedure, starting from the acquisition phase to the processing, restitution, and uh, the final results, the final maps that can be broadcasted or provided to stakeholders or people which are not so familiar with open source data, with GIS. But uh, if you look at this uh, picture, you could probably identify that uh, there are lots of yellow spots. These are the uh, map that we created in order to count flowers. So it's quite uh, important because one of the goals was also to identify how many flowers are in these uh, in this area? For example, this was a portion of an image, and perform the count of each pixel if we can reach so high details. So the idea was to perform ground cover classification, developing uh, some tools which are rapid, accurate, of course, otherwise we can't uh, reach the goals, and most important, low cost. Low cost because if we want to reply this methodology everywhere, we can't use uh, so high cost uh, uh, tools. We start uh, with a uh, uh, land surveying, with uh, like uh, um, surveying using uh, drones and specific cameras. I'll uh, show you which camera we have used. We obtained these photogrammetric mm -hmm. products, mm -hmm. uh, classified these, uh, uh, these uh, maps. We have performed image segmentation the object-oriented classifications in order to provide thematic maps. Uh, this project was a two-year project uh, that was finished uh, a couple of months ago. Of course, uh, it was quite short like, as a time period, and the idea is to be able to have a grant extension in mm -hmm. order to mm -hmm. test uh, the uh, methodology in other areas. Because uh, this project started at the beginning of 2020, and as you said, there was COVID. So one of the biggest problems we encountered was the problem about flying between Italy and Israel. And uh, uh, luckily, we uh, used the last flight that was landed in Tel Aviv before closing frontiers. And for this reason, we were able to collect the data. Unfortunately, we weren't able to perform many other flights because the restrictions uh, didn't permit us to do this uh, and other analysis. We selected two different types of uh, environment. The first one is the Alexander Stream National Park that is based, uh, as you can see here, in the north part of Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv uh, is uh, more or less around here. Is a specific ecosystem uh, composed by coastal sand areas. It's quite, uh, quite big because there are about uh, uh, many, many hectares. We selected these, only these uh, three patches, and each uh, patch has an extension of about 10 hectares. Okay? We performed eight flights over this area, and we collected uh, 65 gigabytes of raw data that have to be processed. On the right side of this slide, you can see the other environment that is complete, is totally different. You can see almond trees. This is uh, settled in the Judean foothill that is in the south part of Tel Aviv. So the environmental conditions are completely different. No sandy areas, but shrublands and uh, Maki's ecosystems, lots of almond trees. These are really important because uh, over these uh, trees, can be found bees for pollinators. So in this area, the, uh, we selected again only three patches, and uh, each area has an extension that is comparable to the previous one. In this case, uh, we did uh, 11 flights, uh, and we collected 77 uh, gigabytes of raw data. 
These data were collected using a no really low cost instruments up to now because the idea was to say, okay, let's use the typical or traditional tools that we can find on the market and then we perform a downscaling approach from the typical uh, approach mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. a low cost. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, have the possibility to perform second flights. So for this reason, we selected an aircraft that is a DJI Matrice uh, 210 with uh, a slant range camera, this is not uh, an RGB camera, this is a, a multispectral camera, which, be, which we'll um, describe uh, later. And uh, we also set some ground control points following the typical photogrammetric approach. So to create a georeferenced uh, map, a 3D model, and uh, from the input images, mm -hmm. we perform the, the features matching using ground control mm -hmm. points. Mm -hmm. We have defined the uh, the, uh, we have georeferenced the, the maps following the Israeli reference system and after this uh, rough map we uh, did the refinement mm -hmm. and for each area we have uh, obtained 82 million points uh, like a map. Of course we have also compared open source software with uh, non-open source in order to verify how different results can be reached, in order to provide also this info to the stakeholders, and in order to see also what's the difference in terms of accuracy, precision, and quality of these maps. Then uh, we created meshes, uh, look at uh, the number of possible phases obtained, uh, texturization, creation of digital terrain model and digital surface model, and at the end, an ortho mosaic. Look at the resolution, one centimeter of resolution, because uh, we suppose that each flower has a dimension of one centimeter. Okay? In this way, the idea was to see if we are able to detect flowers and compare this approach with the on-site field sampling. So for each uh, patches, the Israeli guys were there and count flowers, not only in 10 hectares, but only in a subset of these patches. And then we have propagated the number of flowers in order to compare these results. Then, after the typical, the traditional photogrammetric approach, we exploited the Orfeo toolbox uh, that yesterday was uh, an amazing workshop. I, unfortunately, I hadn't the possibility to follow them, but uh, Bianca did, so it was really great. And uh, uh, coupling these uh, toolbox with the uh, Shikit Learn uh, tools, we have uh, created the, the, uh, follow the final products. So we have performed uh, an object oriented classification. In these uh, slides, you can uh, see the three main steps in order to obtain the map production. First of all, the data preparation the uh, supervised the learning approach and the map production. So, and this, especially in these two last steps, Vincenzo did a huge work and I really want to thank him. So, first of all, because the time is not so long for my speech, I want to show you how many classes we have decided to identify according to the Israeli guys. So, we have uh, decided to distinguish these uh, uh, 10 possible classes. Uh, one of them, uh, the hoodie plants, have been uh, divided uh, in two main subclasses in order to distinguish better the bees environment. And uh, thanks to this uh, uh, slant range uh, camera, which is, as I said, is not only an RGB camera, but is able also to use uh, other bands, we were able to perform a feature classification, exploiting also information from other uh, indicators and in this uh, right side of these slides you can see the, uh, the main bands that can be uh, the sorry the main indicators that can be created uh, using uh, this type uh, of uh, uh, sensors. Ofeo toolbox implements the large scale mean shift segmentation and we followed this type of approach. So first of all we have uh, uh, selected a uh, spatial radius and a color range in order to reduce the area. We labeled images in order to be able to perform the um, training uh, approach. Then finally, 
uh, we uh, vectorize the, the data. And in this uh, last part of uh, the slide, you can see the, um, the steps that we have performed in order to create a set of polygons with associated features. So we followed both pixel and object-based approach. The pixel-based is, uh, is made with the ecologist mm -hmm. in order to be able to compare uh, these uh, results. So we perform this type of uh, mm -hmm. analysis and uh, let me go in these, into these slides in order to summarize the data set composition and the results. So we started with uh, an array, a matrix that was uh, quite big for pixel-based and object-based. We obtained at the beginning 41 columns, means 41 features, and uh, 129 columns for the object base. There were too much, uh, uh, or sorry, too many uh, indicators, and uh, uh, staring from this data set, we decided to use the person correlation analysis in order to drop uh, all indicators with a correlation score of uh, 0 0.9. So, starting from this data set, we reduced the number of columns uh, from uh, 41 to 21, and from 129 to 47, okay? After this uh, feature dropping, we uh, did an analysis uh, using the Gini criterion uh, during the random forest training, and we validate uh, our uh, results using the three main indicators that you can find in literature. So first of all, the precision, which compares the true positive uh, over the true positive plus the false negative, and uh, the meaning is like this, of all positive, uh, positive predictions, how many are really positive? So, and uh, recall that is quite the opposite so of all the real positive cases, how many are predicted positive? And combining them, we reached the, the F1 score that is the harmonic mean of precision and recall by definition. So it combines these two previous indicators into a single number. So, here in these slides, you can see the accuracy values that we got for the pixel based and the object based. As you can see, there is a quite difference because we reached 0.92 for pixel based and 0.79 for the object based. There are quite strange results. For example, if you look at uh, uh, indicator or class 6, you can see that we weren't able to obtain any information about precision recall and F1 score because the support number was so low. So it was quite difficult to uh, compute these uh, three indicators. But for mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. other parameters, we did uh, quite, we obtained quite good results in some cases, also 0 0.98. If you look these, for example, for this class, uh, also in the object base, we uh, got really high values. But for example, for class number four, uh, the F1 score was quite uh, um, different. Okay, so also the number of classes, the type of class uh, played a crucial role. At the end, we created classifications maps uh, using also the percentage of the area, the covered area, and uh, uh, trying to reply the methodology out of the area that we have studied in order to generalize the results. In this case, you can see the Horto mosaic that we have created and then different um, uh, thematic maps that have been obtained. This is another uh, uh, example of the second type of environment, so the Judean foothills and the Alexander National Stream Park. And in this slide, I don't want to stress you on numbers, but there we got very wide tables with lots of numbers. It's not the goal of my speech, but you can find all the results. If you are interested in it, you can read the papers uh, and you can find all the details. Details, sorry. Uh, let's move to the conclusion because the time uh, is uh, quite over. So uh, I don't want to uh, enhance what's, uh, how many uh, parameters we have studied and how important is the bees uh, environment and the, the bees uh, uh, ecosystems. So we found uh, three focal habitat characteristics indicators and uh, we have tried to 
define a methodology for line cover classification that is quite automatic. So that's uh, quite good. We replied this methodology in other areas, even in the same portion of the Israel territory, and we got the same results. Of course, which are the next step? Try to reply this uh, analysis in other places, firstly in Israel, then in Italy, and then all around the world, tr trying to generalize uh, the methodology, and then reduce uh, the cost of the instruments that we have used. That's all, so I hope to be uh, on time. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>